is July 30th, 2018, a day that I'll never forget. I sat down for a family dinner with my two boys, Sam and Will, age five and three at the time. My husband had been traveling for work and was resting, he was tired and was resting on the couch in our back room. We were at a couple bites into our meal and all of a sudden we heard a loud bang. I didn't really think much of it, but my older son Sam went out to see what had happened. And he came back and he said, Mom, Dad looks so funny. I go, what do you mean Dad looks funny? He said, Dad, I think Dad's playing a joke. He looks so funny at the bottom of the stairs. And my heart dropped and I ran over and I saw that my husband had fallen from the top of the stairs down to the concrete foundation of our garage. I was in shock. Hysteria ensued, kids were crying, I was crying. The ambulance came, we were in the ICU for two weeks, and at the end of those two weeks, my husband didn't make it. He didn't survive. I lost him, my kids lost their dad. It was awful. The unimaginable had happened. Now, I have my, I, I couldn't think or sleep, or as you can imagine, I couldn't think, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, I really couldn't function. And now I have my doctoral degree in clinical psychology, and I've been in the wellness world for decades, but nothing that I had trained for and nothing that I knew prepared me for something like this. How do you get through this? I wanted someone to tell me what to do. So I reached out to colleagues and grief counselors and friends. I sought the advice of everybody. And my doctor said, you're going to have to be able to function. You're going to have to be able to take care of your kids. You're going to need medication. And so I took medication. And the thing about medication is that it helped me calm down and it helped me get a little bit of rest. But it made me feel even more foggy and even more groggy. I felt despondent and so so tired. Eventually, I thought, this is no way to live. We have one life, and I just I don't want to live it in a haze. And so I thought, there has to be a better way. I needed to find a better solution. And I'm here to tell you that I found that solution. And it's better than any pill that you can take. You don't have to swallow anything and it has no negative side effects. And for me, that solution was and is meditation. Not medication, meditation. Meditation is the reason I'm able to be up here right now and share my story with you. And meditation is and was the life vest that has kept me afloat during the greatest storm of my life. So I'm here to share with you this strategy. It takes eight minutes. And it will dramatically reduce your stress, decrease, redu reduce your stress, reduce your anxiety. It will dramatically help you improve your clarity, your energy. And it's clinically proven to improve the structure of your brain. The cost to you is eight minutes. And my question to you is, is your well-being worth eight minutes a day? So we live in this world of this age of overwhelm, this age of overload. And what I'm, what I'm going to tell you, what I'm going to share with you are three ways in which meditation is going to help you. Number one, it's going to give you more energy and more clarity. Number two, it's going to reduce your anxiety and your stress. And number three, it's going to improve your brain function. It takes eight minutes, and eight minutes a day will change your life. Let's get into energy and clarity, which is a resource that's hard to find these days. We live in what some call the age of overload. How many people feel burnt out by the news cycle? How many people feel overwhelmed by the choices out there? And how many people feel anxious about seeing everybody's perfect lives on social media? We are inundated with so much information, it's hard to keep it straight. When's the last time you've taken five minutes of uninterrupted quiet time? If you're like my kids, it's never, really rare. 
That's not okay. We need time to recharge. So, so you, so you don't, we don't have this, we don't have this time, we're constantly inundated, we don't have this time to rest and recharge. And I did a little research before I came here, and did you know that the average Snapchat user spends 49 and a half minutes on Snapchat a day? And the average Instagram user spends 53 minutes of their time every day on Instagram. That's a lot of time. And I'm not asking you to give up Snapchat, and I'm not asking you to give up Instagram. What I'm asking of you today is to carve out eight minutes from your social media feeds to calm your nervous system, to recharge your battery, and to help you gain a sense of clarity. Eight minutes will change your life. We used to live in a world where work and, work and life and home life were very separated. But they're not so separate anymore because we have our devices and they follow us everywhere. Our private time is no longer private. We're being held accountable at all hours of the day. And there is no rest and recovery time. And so what I'm saying to you today is it's more important than ever to put that into your day, to schedule that time to recharge. Eight minutes a day will change your life. So we talked about energy and clarity, and now we're going to move on to anxiety. Because this age of overload has created a perpetual state of anxiety. We are constantly anxious. Everybody is anxious. And anxiety is the root cause of stress. And stress is the leading cause of illness and death. So this is serious, and the consequences are real. Kids are paying attention more to their screens and to their reputations and grades, and they're getting to know who they really are on the inside. Parents are so overwhelmed by the, all the influences on themselves and their kids that they're losing who they are. And what's happening is that our inner voices are getting suffocated. And when you can't hear your inner voice, you can't make sound decisions. And so let's bring this now to what's happening here in Chatham. In a recent study in 2016, 62% of students reported not being able to remain cool and calm as a response to stress. 35% of students report their response to stress as jittery and cannot sit still. 27% of students report never finding time to sit still and be quiet with no distractions. This is not OK. The recommendation from the survey was we need to promote healthy coping mechanisms to deal with stress. We need to find a better way. And what I'm suggesting to you today is that one of these ways, one of these better ways, is to take eight minutes out of your day to get quiet, to tune into your own inner voice, and to find who you are. So we talked about energy and clarity, and we talked about anxiety, and now I want to bring it to your brain, your brain structure. And this is where the magic of meditation comes in, is because I'm not just talking about something that's going to make you feel good. I'm talking about something that's going to change and positively impact the structure of your brain. A recent study found that in as little as eight minutes a day, for eight weeks, there is a positive and significant impact on your cerebral health. Harvard scientists have found that meditation conclusively and positively changes your brain structure. Studies out of Massachusetts are, are showing that people who meditate have more gray matter. They develop more gray matter in their brain. And that gray matter helps with cognition. It helps with memory. And it helps with emotion regulation, among many other things. And so the people who meditate have more of this. And the thing about gray matter is that as you age, your gray matter declines. That's that cognitive decline. But another study found that 50-year-old long-term meditators had the same amount of gray matter as 25-year-old non-meditators. So we're beginning to find out that meditation can prevent that cognitive, cognitive decline. And we're just starting to really get all the research together to understand just how powerful meditation can be 
on your brain, for your brain, and for your life. So I'm asking you, is your well-being and your brain health worth eight minutes? Let's take it to your daily life. This is a picture before a meditation and after. And you can see that the brain before is sort of more reactive and it's settled down after. So let's say you're, you're, with, you're at home, your kids are driving you crazy and they're pushing your buttons and they're fighting and it happens to me all the time. And you want to scream. But maybe if you've taken your eight minutes, you're able to be a little bit more calm. You're able to be a little bit more responsive versus reactive. And maybe at the end of the day, you rest your head on the pillow and you think, OK, I did OK today. I was, I was an OK parent. <laughs> and let's take it to road rage. You know, happens a lot, right? So it's real. So you're, you're on the road and someone cuts you off and you want to scream. But maybe if you've taken your eight minutes that day, you feel a little bit more centered. Maybe it doesn't feel so bad. And maybe at the end of the day, you feel just more centered and, and more calm as a human being. That's what meditation has done for me. I'm sharing this with you because if meditation is something that helped me in the greatest storm of my life, I know that it's something that can help you and the, it navigate the waters of your life. It works, and it's worth it. And so I want you to feel what it feels like to be in this state. So indulge me for a minute as I guide you through one minute of meditation. Place your feet on the ground. And you can close your eyes or just gaze down in front of you. And begin with a long, slow, deep breath. Breathe in through your nose, and as you exhale, let your shoulders drop. And we'll begin and end with the sound of the bell. Start to pay attention to the fact, the simple fact that you're breathing. And feel the cool air as it comes in through your nose and the warm air as it comes out. And then feel a sense of relaxation travel from the top of your head, down your forehead, softening your eyelids, letting your jaw drop down. Feel your shoulders drop a little lower from your ears. Feel your seat in the chair, the support of the chair underneath you. Feel your feet in your shoes. And take a moment to come back to your breath and breathing in. Just be aware that you're breathing in. And breathing out, be aware that you're breathing out. And in a moment, I'll gently call your attention back to this room with the bell, and you can slowly open your eyes. How many people feel different than when they first walked in the room? So imagine what this would feel like if you did this for eight minutes. And imagine what your life would be like if you committed to eight minutes a day every day. Meditation is like taking a vitamin. It's not like taking an Advil. The more you do it, the better results you see and the sweeter your life feels. What I'm asking of you today is to make a commitment. Make a commitment to yourself. Make a commitment to spending eight minutes on your well-being. And when I'm done speaking, I want you to turn to the, your right or left or anyone who's next to you and tell them when and where you're going to do this. I do it in my car. I park my car before I go into work, and I park my car before I go home. And however many minutes I do it, it works, and it's worth it. So I'll end here by saying if you, if you consistently meditate for eight minutes a day, you may just find yourself. Thank you. Thank you.